ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله Indeed the most truthful of speech and the best of words are the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم And the best guidance is the guidance of our beloved messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها And the worst of affairs are those things we newly invent into this religion of ours وكل محدثة بدعة and everything we newly invent into this religion of ours is an innovation وكل بدعة ضلالة and every innovation is misguidance and it leads astray وكل ضلالة في النار every going astray and every misguidance is in the hellfire ثم أما بعد my dear brothers and sisters in Islam to continue off of last week's topic of ذكر الله the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and its importance. We want to continue to share how vital this is to the survival of the heart of the Muslim so that he meets his Lord with very heavy scales just because of his remembering Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَتَطْمَئِنُّ قُلُوبُهُمْ بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ أَلَا بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ تَطْمَئِنُّ الْقُلُوبُ Allah says what means those who believe in the oneness of Allah with his Lord, in respect to his Lordship, in respect to his oneness, that worship is only to him, and with respect to his names and his attributes. And those whose hearts find rest in the remembrance of Allah, verily in the remembrance of Allah do the hearts find rest. Will the hearts find true comfort, true peace, true happiness? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, what means therefore remember me? With all types of remembrance. Salah is a remembrance. The dhikr before and after it, or at various parts of the day, the ad'iyah we make, these are all remembrances of Allah. And so re- remember me, and I, meaning Allah says, I will remember you and be grateful to me for my countless favors upon you and never be ungrateful to me. ثُمَّ قَالَ اللَّهُ وَاذْكُرْ رَبَّكَ فِي نَفْسِكَ تَضُرُّعًا وَخِيفَةً وَدُونَ الْجَهْلِ مِنَ الْقَوْلِ بِالْغَدُوِّ وَالْأَصَالِ وَلَا تَكُمْ مِنَ الْغَافِلِينَ <coughs> Allah says what means and remember your Lord by your tongue and within yourself humbly and without fear and with fear without loudness in the words in the mornings and in the afternoons and be not of those who are neglectful so the true neglectful person with respect to what he owes Allah is the one who doesn't remember Allah except for a little or at all. An Abi Hurairah radiallahu anhu qal qal Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kalimatan khafifatan ala lisan thaqilatan fil mizan habibatan ila rahman subhanallah wa bihamdih subhanallah al-azim. Our Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he narrated in the authentic hadith that we find in the Sunan of al Tirmidhi and it has been graded as Sahih. The Prophet ﷺ, he said two phrases, two statements that are light on the tongue. Very easy to say. They take no energy or effort from you. They can be said in one breath. Two statements light on the tongue, but very heavy on your scales to bring 
your, your, your scale of good deeds to be very weighty and very heavy. Very beloved to Ar-Rahman, very, very beloved to the, especially, the entirely merciful one, the especially merciful one. Subhanallah wa bihamdih, all praise and glory be to Allah, and glory be to Allah, the magnificent one. Subhanallah wa bihamdih, subhanallah al azim two very easy phrases. So beloved to Allah, the most merciful one, so heavy on the scale, so light on the tongue. But many will go days, days, years, maybe without saying these phrases. وعن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لأن أقول سبحان الله والحمد لله ولا إله إلا الله والله أكبر أحب إلي مما طلعت عليه الشمس. رواه مسلم أن الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم said that I can utter the words سبحان الله that Allah's free from any perfect imperfection and all glory is due to Him. Alhamdulillah, that all praise and thanks be to Allah. La ilaha illallah, that there is no one worthy of worship except for Allah. Allahu Akbar, that Allah is the greatest and nothing and nobody else matters. That I could say these are more beloved to me than, and more dear to me than anything over which the sun rises. Again, very basic Easy statements, light on the tongue, so easy to say, fulfillment comes to the heart. And they are more beloved than anything over which the sun can comes out. This was to our Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. <clears throat> Muslim. Our Prophet ﷺ, he narrated, the Mufarradun have gone ahead. They have gone ahead in their race in regards to chasing the reward on the Day of Judgment. The ones who will be foremost to get the reward on the Day of Judgment. They said, O Messenger of Allah ﷺ, who are the Mufarradun? Who are these ones who have beat us in that challenge, in that race? The Prophet ﷺ, he said, they are the men and the women who frequently celebrate the remembrances of Allah. Their tongues always wet with the remembrance of Allah. Frequently remembering Allah, thanking Allah, calling on Allah for patience, seeking refuge with Allah, and the likes of these matters. An Abi Hurairah radiallahu anhu قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من قال لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد وهو على كل شيء قدير في يوم مئة مرة كانت له عدل عشر رقاب وكتبت له مئة حسنة ومحيت له مئة عنه عفوا عنه مئة سيئة وكانت له حرزا من الشيطان يومه ذلك حتى يمسي ولم يأتي أحد أفضل مما جاء به إلا أحد عمل أكثر من ذلك ومن قال سبحان الله وبحمده في يوم مئة مرة حتت خطاياه ولو كانت مثل زبد البحر رواه مسلم Our Prophet وسلم, he said whoever says these words whoever utters these words لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد وهو على كل شيء قدير that there is no God worthy of worship except for Allah alone without having any partners and all the sovereignty and kingdom and kingship and ownership of the heavens and the earth and what exists is belongs to Him. And all praise is due to Him. And He is capable of everything. Whoever says this 100 times every day, it's, they get the reward of freeing 10 slaves, as if you free 10 slaves. A hundred good deeds will be written for you on your scale. A hundred evil deeds or sins will be wiped off of your scale. And you will be safeguarded from shaitan on that day until the evening comes. And no one comes with anything more excellent than this person, than the one who says it more than this. And he who utters, subhanallah wa bihamdi. Again, something so very easy, light on the tongue, easy to say. From the words very heavy on the scales, whoever says subhanallah wa bihamdi. All glory be to Allah, the one who is perfect and does not have the slightest bit of imperfection. <clears throat> and all praises due to him. Whoever says that a hundred times in the day, his sins or her sins are obliterated, even if they're equal to the extent of the foam that you see on the ocean.
And this hadith is in Sahih Muslim. The dhikr, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, it is what Allah deserves from all of His creation, that we remember Him with every breath, and thank Him for every breath, and thank Him for every beat, and thank Him for everything that occurs, that we should not do anything in this life, but remember Him and remember Him. This is what Allah deserves. Yet, when we do it, He rewards us. Yet, when we do it, He increases our rank. Yet, when we do it, He erases some sins. This is the rahmah, the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our blessed Lord truly deserving His names, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, the entirely merciful over all of creation, the especially merciful towards the believers. May Allah make us from them. And Abi Musa al-Ash'ari radiallahu anhu, عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال مثل الذي يذكرون ربه والذي لا يذكره والذي لا يذكره مثل الحي والميت رواه البخاري ومسلم our prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said the similitude of the one who remembers Allah versus the one who doesn't remember Allah is like the living and the dead the one who remembers Allah this person is like someone who is alive living and functioning Yet the one who doesn't remember Allah is compared to the one who is dead and has no life. And Abdullah bin Abbas, radiallahu anhu, he said that one of the companions came to the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, in, Ya Rasulullah, inna shara'i al-Islam qad kathurat alayya fa'akhbirni bi shay'in fa'akhbirni bi shay'in atashabbathu bihi qala la yazalu lisanaka رَقْبًا مِنْ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ Our Prophet وسلم, he said in this authentic hadith, which is graded as Hassan in the Sunnah of Tirmidhi, one of the companions, he came to him and said, the, O Messenger of Allah, the injunctions of Islam have become a lot for me. So tell me something that I can do and hold fast to it. He said, keep your tongue wet with the remembrance of Allah. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, just imagine, think of yourself. Judge yourself, reckon yourself. How much of your day is spent in idle talk? How much of your day is spent even working for your dunya, which we have to do, and this is okay for us to do. And how little we are praising Allah, or thanking Allah, or glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do not die with your tongues, not being wet in your lifetime with the remembrance of Allah. And Abi Musa al-Ash'ari radiallahu anhu, قال قال لي رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ألا أدلك على كلمة من كنوز الجنة أو قال على كنز من كنوز الجنة قال بلى عفوا قلت بلى قال لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله Our Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said should I not direct you to words from the from the treasures of paradise they will be from the treasures of the pair of Jannah or he said like a treasure from the treasures of paradise Abu Musa al-Ashari, he said, of course, do that. Tell me what it is. So the Prophet ﷺ, he told him, it is la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. That there is no power or might except that of Allah. Except with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Again, a very simple phrase. Many of us say it if we see something bad. Or something happens that startles us. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. And we throw our hands up. When this is a phrase that is from the treasures or part of the treasures of the treasures of Jannah. Such a heavy phrase that no power, no might exists on this earth except with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For the brothers coming in, if there's a blue spot, a blue line, you can take it, or there's room in the social hall. Barakallahu feekum. Aqulu qali hadu wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum. Adu Allah ya akhfir lakum. الحمد لله ثم الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا ان هدانا الله الحمد لله غافر الذنوب جميعها الا الشرك به والصلاه والسلام على رسول الله وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين اما بعد my dear brothers and sisters in islam ذكر الله these phrases الحمد لله سبحان الله الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله سبحان الله العظيم سبحان الله وبحمده and the likes of them not only will they fill your scales not only will they erase your sins but they will get you to a level of contentment in this life the ذكر of Allah 
The remembrance of Allah should be of the utmost importance in the life of a Muslim. And it has many rewards in it. Do not forget that it is the key for the heart to really find rest, to find contentment, to find hope, to find satisfaction and happiness and comfort with all that this life brings you by Allah's permission. Dhikr of Allah is a blessing. The dhikr of Allah is a gift from Allah to us. And it must be implemented to better ensure that you have an akhirah, which is success, successful. That being graded as going to Jannah without any time in Jahannam, in the hellfire. The dhikr of Allah is from the most righteous of deeds. Allah says, الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ قُوبًا لَهُمْ وَحُسْنُ مُعَابٍ Allah says what means, those who believe in the oneness of Allah. Again, all of our deeds do not matter if our tawheed is not correct, if our aqidah is not correct. So we will always, always remind ourselves of this. Because in the end, that is the basis of the saving point. Even if you come with years of prayers and fasting and the likes of these matters, none of it matters if your tawheed isn't sound. So those who believe in the oneness of Allah with respect to His worship, His Lordship and His names and His attributes, and they work righteousness, from these righteous deeds are simply your tongue being wet with the remembrance of Allah. Uba, all kinds of happiness, all kinds of glory, all kinds of, of su- success, all kinds of satisfaction, or a name of a tree in Jannah is for them. Yani in Jannah and a beautiful place of a final return. An Abi Huraira radi- an Abi Huraira radiallahu anhu qal, qal Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam yaqul Allah taala. أنا عند ظن عبدي بي وأنا معه إذا ذكرني فإن ذكرني في نفسه ذكرته في نفسي وإن ذكرني في ملئ ذكرته في ملئ خير من خير منهم متفق عليه. This hadith that we have in Bukhari and Muslim, we mentioned the longer version in the previous week, and in the translation that I had printed, it had mentioned when Allah remembers. Uh, when you remember Allah in your heart, Allah remembers you in His heart. And really, that description is not found anywhere. So the proper translation, inshaAllah, we will relay with it today, inshaAllah. Allah says, or the Messenger of Allah sallam, said, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I am as my slave expects me to be. And I am with him when he remembers me. And if he remembers me inwardly in himself, I will remember him inwardly to myself. And if he remembers me in an assembly, I will remember him in a better assembly, to the assembly of the malaika of the angels. So remembering Allah is for all times and for all places. When you remember Allah, Allah will remember you. He will boast to his angels about you. You angels have to do what I say. These humans don't have to, but they're choosing to worship me. They're choosing to remember me. They're choosing to glorify and extol me and to praise me. This is the benefits, ya akhwani wa akhwat, of dhikrillah. Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah, Shaykh al-Islam, he said, the remembrance of Allah is to the heart like water is to the fish. What happens when you take a fish out of water? If we ask our little brothers, our young brothers, the future of our deen, what happens to a fish when you take him out of water? You will say the fish will die. This is like the one who does not remember Allah. It's like taking a fish out of water. When you take the remembrance of Allah out of your heart, you have no life to you even though you may continue to walk and breathe and talk and do. <clears throat> this is the similitude. An Abi Huraira radiallahu anhu qal, قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ما قعد قوم مقعدا لم يذكر الله ولم يصلوا على النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إلا كان عليهم حصرة يوم القيامة. Pay attention to this, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam. The Abu Huraira he narrated this hadith from the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم, and it is greater as Hassan in the Sunnah of Tirmidhi. <coughs> he said, if people sit in an assembly. If they sit, if you invite brothers or sisters over to your home, if you have an assembly, a group with your family, whatever it may be, if you sit in a group and you do not remember Allah in it, nor invoke the blessings on the Prophet ﷺ, it will be a cause of grief for you on the day of resurrection. How many times did an event happen? A gathering happened. From a wedding to anything else. Usually the funerals, there's remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <clears throat> When you have some people over, some friends over, your family, or it's just your family, 
and they're sitting in a group and there's no mention of Allah. Or there's no sending prayers upon the Prophet Wasallam. And I remind you here of the hadith where the Prophet Wasallam he said, رَغِي مَا أَنْفُوا رَجُلٍ ذَكَرْتُ عِنْدَهُ فَلَمْ يُصَلِّ عَلَيْهِ That the Prophet Wasallam he, he said, May the person be humiliated, the one who my name is mentioned in front of him and he does not send salah upon me, does not send prayers upon me by saying, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. How many of the Muslims we hear the name of the Prophet Wasallam? Not during the khutbah. Because your job during the khutbah is to listen. It's not to say those things while the Imam is speaking and it's not out of respect to me, it's because of what our Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. <clears throat> but outside of that, so many Muslims you'll mention Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. Not a lip moves to utter anything to say Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So this is a reminder for us to always send prayers on him so that we have a better chance for his shafa'ah on the day of resurrection. The Prophet ﷺ said, if people sit in assembly and they do not remember Allah nor send prayers on the Prophet ﷺ, it will be a cause of grief for you on the day of resurrection. We got enough to worry about. Facing Allah with the sins we did in this earth, transgressing his limits when we knew we shouldn't but we followed our whims and our desires. We got enough to be afraid of, enough to have grief over on that day. Why add to it by not remembering Allah in your gatherings or, or sending prayers on His Messenger wasallam? Remembrance of Allah is a sustenance for the heart and soul. Pleasing to Allah and the way to erase from your heart worry and re- replace it with contentment and happiness and peace. This is the remedy for the hard heart. This is the remedy for the troubled heart. So remember Allah, your Creator, and my Creator, the Lord Most High, by His names and His attributes, praising Him and thanking Him, remembering His favors and His blessings, mentioning His commands and His prohibitions, reading His words that we find in the Qur'an, His words perfected, protected forever for all of time. And realize it is in the remembrance of Allah that you will find the way out of every one of your difficulties and hardships and problems and worries and anxieties. So humble yourself before Allah and ask Him sincerely. Allah says what it means. So Allah gave them the reward of this world. The reward of this world, good blessings, good provisions, and protection and victory over aduwina, uh, over those who show enmity to us. And the excellent reward of the akhirah, yani jannah. This will be the reward, and Allah loves the muhsineen. My brothers and sisters in Islam, look, we're weak. We were created weak. We're weak. We follow what we shouldn't sometimes. And we turn or rely at times to things which are haram. Things like when we're troubled, when we're sad, when we need to feel like we need to be picked up. What do we go to? We don't go to the book of Allah. We don't go to the remembrance of Allah. We go to the khaba'if that's placed on this earth. We go to the filth. From those things, the khamr, the intoxicants, the drugs, the alcohol, all of those come under khamr. We go to gambling, we go to listening to music, thinking those things will comfort us. What have they comforted of a person except for only a few seconds, only for them to return to the misery and the sadness and the depression that they were in? The true remedy without a doubt is found in the Sharia and used by those who love Allah and know that Allah is the only hope to lift up your spirits. Allah is the only hope to bring you out of depression or sadness or anxiety. And there's ad'iyah, there's dua, that is remembrances of Allah from our Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah is our only hope and help. And in that, to get that, we have to remember Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَتَطْمَئِنَّ قُلُوبُهُمْ بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ أَلَا بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ تَطْمَئِنَّ الْقُلُوبُ Those who believe in the oneness of Allah and whose hearts find rest in remembering Him. <coughs> Verily, in the remembrance of Allah do the hearts find rest. اللهم اجعلنا من الذاكرين والذاكرات اللهم اجعلنا من الذاكرين والذاكرات اللهم اجعلنا من الذاكرين والذاكرات اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الاحياء منهم والاموات انك انت سميع مجيب قريب الدعوات انك انت سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك سبحان ربك رب العزة أما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين